Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to the lecture on logistic regression of this machine learning course. This section gives a deeper understanding and interpretation of cross entropy. So far, we considered the logistic regression model to classify two classes. It bases on the logistic function sigma. The function is shown here for the one-dimensional situation of a single independent variable x. The function is fitted to data by adjusting the parameters beta 0 and beta 1. Therefore, cross entropy was introduced as cost function. Here, the equation takes the two classes into account. The ith data point has a target value yi, which can be either 0 or 1, depending on the class it represents. Further, we proved that this cost function is convex for logistic regression. So it seems a useful cost function. But what does it mean? Note that we have seen the generalization of logistic regression for multiple class classifications. This leads to the softmax regression. The cost function is generalized as well. It is 1 over capital M, the number of data points, times the sum over all data points by i and the sum over all classes by L of minus yli, the true target value for the Lth class, times the logarithm of the corresponding softmax function for the data point. In the following, we will look into the meaning of this cost function. To understand this, let's start by considering how many binary splits, capital H, are needed to locate a specific information among capital N possible options. In our example, we have eight different options symbolized by gray and blue squares. We seek for an arbitrary square, for example, the square on the left. A split divides the eight options into two halves. Then we consider here the left half of the split. Another split is performed. Then a last split locates the information. So in total three binary splits are needed to locate an information out of eight options. In general, the relation is the number of options capital N equals 2 to the power of capital H, the number of splits. The base 2 is related to the two possibilities in a split. Each split divides the input space into two halves. So the number of options where the information is located is divided by a factor of 2 for each split. Solving this relation with respect to the number of splits gives capital H equals the logarithm base 2 of capital N. So how can we transfer this to probabilities? The probability value for a class J is denoted by pj. This value can be written as a fraction a over b. Means from b possibilities a relate to class j. Or in other words, from b options a informations relate to class j. So the number of relevant options capital N is capital N equals to B over A in this case. Let's look on an example to understand this better. On the right side, 
a probability distribution is presented. A quarter of the boxes are grey, another quarter are blue and half of the boxes are dark blue. The probability for a grey box is a quarter. Means we seek for a single grey box in four possible options. Therefore, capital N equals 4 and we need two splits to locate the box. The number of splits is given by logarithm base 2 of 4. The probability for the dark blue boxes is one half. This means we seek for a pair of boxes in four options. Therefore capital N equals 4 over 2, which is equal to 2, and we need a single split to locate this pair of boxes. The number of splits is given by the logarithm base 2 of 2. The number of relevant options is capital N equals B over A, which is the inverse of the probability value. So the information of a probability value Pj is the logarithm base 2 of the inverse of the probability value 1 over Pj. With logarithmic law, this is the negative logarithm of the probability pj. To calculate the information encoding of the entire probability distribution, we need to sum over all possible probability values. However, high probability values are more frequent than small probabilities. So, the information encoding of a single probability value is weighted by the probability itself. The entropy measure of the information of the entire probability distribution is h equals the sum over all probabilities of the negative probability times the logarithm of the probability. Now, if we assume that we have a probability distribution Q, but in reality the values occur with a probability P, we have capital H of P and Q equals the sum over all probabilities of minus P times the logarithm of Q. This equation has the same structure than the cost function of logistic regression. So, the cross entropy gives the information entropy of a probability distribution and the word cross indicates that the real probabilities are different from the assumed distribution. Now, this can be easily transferred to our classification problem. The assumed probability distribution Q corresponds to the current approximation of the logistic function to the data. This is because the logistic function outputs a probability value. An example is sketched on the lower left in light blue. However, the true values y for class A are 0 or 1. Either the data point belongs to class A or not. Exemplarily, this is sketched in dark blue. This needs to be done for every class of the classification problem. So, the cost function of logistic regression describes the information entropy of the current model probabilities when the real probabilities of the data are different to that. So, it measures how good the real probabilities agree with the modeled probabilities. Section finished. Thank you very much for listening.
If you liked this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe this channel. If you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment down below. And thanks again for listening. See you in the next section.